start off with the, the last point about the hosting options. Uh, when I joined the society, our internet site was hosted internally and our intranet was hosted externally for a variety of complicated reasons I'm not going to bore you with now. But the internet was suffering quite a lot from reliability problems. We didn't have, um, if you like, a corporate quality data centre internally. We had power problems. We had some uh, IT support problems. Um, we took the decision very, very early on that the website was one of our key platforms for communication with the outside world. And it was probably for us the most business critical system we had, more so than finance, HR and stuff. If, if those go down for a couple of hours internally, it's inconvenient. If the website goes down for a couple of hours, we lose revenue we lose the opportunity to influence people. So we took a decision quite early on that we were going to host our main website externally in a corporate quality data centre. Uh, we were lucky to get a quite a, a good deal on that through a, a beneficiary, but um, we still would have gone ahead with the externally hosting group regardless for the reliability. As a charity, we just can't build an internal data centre with divergent power, diverse network routing, and all those corporate quality type things. So hosting was a key decision for us. Um, and then the three points above, interestingly, were heavily driven by the hosting option. Whether to use a Microsoft platform or, or an open source platform internally would have biased us heavily towards the Microsoft platform because that's where our internal skill set was. By taking the choice to host externally, we were able to put business requirements first and our own existing skill set second because the, the hosting organisation takes care of a number of those IT support issues. We then had a decision whether to go for an open source solution and kind of develop things our, ourselves or the whether to bring in a, a vendor solution. And in the event, the, the tender document we published was actually neutral on that issue. We, we decided we didn't have any preconceptions. It was down to the overall offering. Um, and in the end, we decided to purchase Nofir, which is the Jardu content management system. And we purchased Jardu for both our intranet and internet solutions. And the final point here is about whether we're buying a closed or extendable system. I'm sure many of you know that many of the open source solutions out there, you can buy plugins or develop plugins. And we're a big fan of that methodology. So we were very keen that whatever solution we picked, you could, we could A, develop widgets and things internally, or B, potentially download or develop widgets from other organizations as well. I think um, one thing that people don't really understand about the charity sector is how um, long the tail is. If you look at um, donations or the amount of um, people who are employed by charities, um, you've got a big cluster at the top, you know, which is your Cancer Research UKs, your Oxfams, and that's where a lot, you know, the vast percentage of, of donor income um, is going. Um, then you have, if you like, middle middle range charities like ourselves with perhaps turnover around 40 million pounds a year um, staff over one one and a half thousand um, then you have the long tail and the vast majority of people who are employed in the charity sector in this country are in that long tail um, now not every uh, contact management system is going to be right for every organization um, and the Jardu solution was right for us where we are within, within that um, spectrum. Um, but um, somebody needs to be thinking about the long tail because those charities need content management systems as, as much as we do. And yet, when you look at the surveys that are carried on year on year by an industry organization called NFP Synergy, they do a yearly um, survey of charities' use of the internet called Virtual Promise. Um, and in 2007, the new one is coming out this year, and you can download it for free from their website, but in 2007, only 45% of the organisations had a dedicated budget for their website. Only 57% had a content management system. Only 46% are conducting any kind of regular user surveys of, the, of their, their user base. And yet, paradoxically, you've got this situation where you've got small web teams, and yet of all sectors, you know, within, within um, using content management systems, charities probably have the most to gain from, from them and from the use of new media tools. It's not just about donations. We deliver services online. You know, um, if you are at the end of your tether and you're caring for someone with dementia and it's the middle of the night, you go onto our online forum and you post and somebody replies to your post within two minutes, 
That is a very powerful use of mutual support in a way that our helpline simply could never deliver, you know, even if it was 24-7. And the breadth of experience from all of these people um, means that it's, it's just, it is something that charities must um, engage with. And if they don't engage with it, they will be in the situation of commercial sectors like book selling, where established brands were just pushed aside by new online entities. And charities need to take that as seriously as, as commercial companies do. At the moment, on our website, we get about 1,200,000 visits a year. Um, there are about 6,500 users on our bulletin board, on our, our online forum. We take over a million pounds in online income, the vast majority of which is online sponsorship, but also online donations. Online information is easy to distribute. We don't have the costs involved in terms of printing and postage. Um, our users are happy to download that information. They're happy to print it at home if they think that that's going to mean more money that goes into research. At the same time, because we're a charity, we can leverage some of the, the offerings from major players like Google, for example, which gives us um, a Google grant, like many other charities, to spend on pay-per-click advertising of $10,000 a month. That's one of the reasons, that if you look at the pay-per-click market, one of the most competitive um, pay-per-click markets is the charity sector, because Google has gone and given $10,000 a month to, to nearly every charity. At the same time as well, um, your website, our website, manages to give us something that perhaps we, we could have had before, but would have been very difficult to, to ascertain, and that is intent. The use of analytics, I'm sure you're all aware, is a very powerful tool. But the ability to be able to see not just what people are searching on Google, but what people are searching on our own internal site engine, allows us to pinpoint information that we're either not delivering or not delivering well. And that can be then fed back into the teams who are in charge of commissioning new information. So for all of these you know, reasons, charities should be using the web. But there are still financial you know, restrictions in place. And there's still, if you like, a last you know, push before most charities will have their own in-house web team you know, like we do. Um, we were extremely keen that the solution we put in wasn't just for, about handling information in terms of presenting information. We wanted a solution that could drive workflow, could initiate transactions, and start to become, particularly on the intranet, a real portal for the organisation. And two key aspects of that were the ability to have workflow and forms. So Jardu ships with a product called XForms Professional, which allows essentially end users to develop a form, including a certain amount of um, error checking, typing on fields, etc. And we're utilising this very heavily within the internal organisation. So this week, for example, we're about to launch, um, using the Jardu CMS forms capabilities, uh, new user forms for HR when new starters join, um, equipment purchasing forms, etc. cetera. Uh, and the forms uh, functionality is also used very heavily on the external website to allowing people for signing up for volunteering opportunities, uh, running events, etc. So I think what key aspect for me, and I've come from a corporate background where they have big portal systems is, a CMS on its own is great, but if you can start adding in the transactional flavour through workflow and forms, you're really going to add something to your internal and external audiences, and possibly as well, bring in one solution where maybe two would have been required if you hadn't focused in this transactional element to your CMS.